Intel's next generation CPUs just keep looking crazier and crazier, and I'm finally excited for a new CPU. Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by Jawa. Jawa's mission is to be the community for safely buying and selling PC parts at a reasonable price, offering low fees and great customer service, which I can definitely attest to as I personally bought this RTX 3070 from Jawa anonymously, and not only did it arrive quickly, but when I ran into an issue, they immediately replaced it with a flawless substitute and asked that I only send the old one back after I confirmed the new GPU worked great. And the best part is the price I got this card at was well below other listings I could find anywhere else, likely thanks in part to Jawa's much lower seller fees of 9-12% to depending on when you join. So if you're interested in buying or selling PC parts on a platform with low fees and great customer service, be sure to click the link in the description below and watch out for some of my hardware that will likely be popping up very soon. Alright, so AMD's definitely been dominating the CPU market, especially when it comes to gaming thanks to their new X3D process, which gives a whole lot of cash to the CPUs, thereby eliminating the vast majority of latency bottlenecks you might normally see on their CPUs, and this is something that Intel has been struggling with with their brand new Core Ultra CPUs, as unfortunately when they move to a somewhat chiplet design themselves, well, they've got the same latency problems and no extra cash to try and mitigate it. Well, as it turns out, it looks like there's actually been a ton of leaks and rumors about these new CPUs. Previously, we did cover how they could have up to 52 cores as well as their own X3D cache. I believe it was up to roughly 144 megabytes of cache and I'll definitely have some links in the description below so you can watch where that actually originated from over on Red Gaming Tech. And yeah, it was some crazy amount of cash they were gonna be equipped with. And on top of that, we got even more leaks and rumors suggesting that it could have more PCIe lanes as well as faster DDR5 memory as well. But we just got even more information about these CPUs that pretty much backs everything up. Now, this information does come from over on videocards.com and it looks like the source was removed by request. So you'll have to kind of dig around to see where it came from, but it was posted originally apparently over on X. And according to this information, there was what appears to be potentially an official slide. I mean, we'll have to wait and see. Take it with a grain of salt, but it does confirm that the core count, at least if you look at the performance, is likely going to be going up. I mean, take a look here, 1.1x more single-threaded performance and 1.6x more multi-core performance. And apparently it says leadership gaming performance and new low power island. Now 1.1x more performance in single threaded scenarios doesn't sound like a lot, but fellas, you gotta take a look at that leadership gaming performance that it says right there. And if you really focus in on that, I think it's gonna start to make a whole lot of sense and it does back up the idea that yes, they could be using some sort of X3D cache on these CPUs and let's go ahead and dive in and break down exactly how fast these CPUs are gonna be because believe it or not, we should be able to do that within a, probably about a 10% margin in terms of performance to figure out, yes, how fast these will be in gaming. So take a look here first at the multi-core performance that I got over on Tech Power Up. Again, I'll have them linked in the description below. They did a review on the 285K and as you can see here in terms of multi-core performance, it's already leading and it's getting 2448 in terms of a score which does actually put it as 6% faster than the 9950X, which is its AMD competitor, if you don't count the X3D. And then in single core performance, it actually does very well at the same time, giving you 143 for the score versus you're getting 138 on the 9950X. Once again, 4% faster than the 9950X, and typically faster single-threaded performance means faster gaming performance. But if you take a look at this information from TechSpot, again, I'll have them linked, uh, well, at 1080p with an RTX 4090, the 9950X is actually technically 3% faster, and the 9950X3D, well, that's actually 35% faster than the 285K, which is very shocking to see, and that does go a long way in explaining how x 3 or the extra cash these CPUs have, well, it's gonna give them a whole lot more performance. So Intel is definitely in trouble here with only 10% more single-threaded performance. Well, that's not gonna make a difference, fellas. Well, here's the good news. With the extra X3D cash, we can actually estimate the final performance because I found that when you actually tune the bejesus out of these Core Ultra CPUs, they can gain huge performance uplifts. We're talking like 40%, 50%, 60% more performance in select gaming scenarios. I saw some 
crazy gains when you eliminate the latency, but it's not always possible in every game as well. The current core ultra CPUs, no matter how much you overclock them, well, they just don't have enough cash. Well, with the extra 144 megabytes, roughly, hopefully that they'll be getting and 16 performance cores, hopefully, man, that would be crazy. Well, these CPUs are going to be insanely fast. I mean, so let's go ahead and figure out just how much of a performance gain AMD gets from their X3D cache. Well, if you compare the 9950 X3D to the 9950X, it's around 31% faster. And if we simply multiply the original 160 FPS on the 285K times 1.1 for the single threaded performance uplift they'll be getting, well, that gets you 176 frames per second. That would actually put it 7% faster than the 9950X. However, we're not done yet, fellas, because if you multiply that by the 31% gain that AMD gets, and to be clear, we don't know how much of a gain Intel could get. It could be more or it could be less. We'll have to wait and see, but I think it's a pretty safe bet to multiply it by the amount that AMD is able to get themselves. Well, that actually does put you at an incredible 230 frames per second or a 44% increase in gaming. And that does also put it as the fastest CPU on the market in terms of gaming. And that does back up their claims of leadership gaming performance. So it's all starting to come together. You're talking about 60% more multi-core performance according to this slide, which does add up if they're going up to 52 cores, that's crazy. And also 44% more gaming performance and more PCIe lanes. This could honestly, guys, be the ultimate CPU that you've been waiting for, especially if you're someone who's maybe getting a little bit annoyed like me. As much as I love the 9800X3D and is definitely my favorite CPU right now, I do get annoyed when every once in a while I get a two minute boost because it has to retrain the memory. I've definitely found that, you know, 6,000 mega transfers can be a little bit difficult, especially at 64 gigabytes of RAM on AM5 platforms. Not every board and not every CPU is gonna play nice with that. And you can have some instability. So it would be really nice to have the higher RAM compatibility and higher gaming performance, higher multi-core performance of a potential Core Ultra 385K. And I think this could actually be finally a situation where Intel can turn around the ship. They've been headed in the wrong direction, it seems like, and this could really finally put them back on top and deliver gamers and content creators the CPU they've been waiting for. And not only that, well, this is the highest end version. Who's not to say that you couldn't just pick up a 12P core and 16E core version for half the price of their flagship version, give it a tiny overclock and get the same gaming performance and still get insanely good multi-core performance. So that's why I'm so excited to see what Nova Lake has to offer. I believe it should be available sometime by the end of 2026 although it does depend. It'll either be end of 2026 or sometime in 2027, depending on if they do get it out in time or if they have to delay it slightly and bring out a refresh of the 285K first. And in that case, you'd have the 385K in 2026 and then the 485K in 2027. But here's hoping it comes in 2026 to finally put some pressure on AMD. But hey, that's just what I think. Do you think that Intel can actually finally beat AMD when it comes to gaming as well as multi-core performance? And how much power do you think it's gonna draw to actually be able to pull that off? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA release new GPUs. Also, if you wanna see more, check out one of these related videos. You won't be disappointed.